This is Montana This Morning. And good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Tuesday. I'm Andrea Lewis. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. On new this morning, a fight over clean drinking water is reaching a boiling point at a Billings Mobile Home Park. Residents confronting management and law enforcement trying to keep the peace. As Q2's Jackie Coffin learns the company shut off tenants' water for 24 hours, throwing gasoline on an already combustible dispute. Water did come back on for Meadow Lark residents Monday afternoon, but I want to show you what that water looks like for some residents coming out of their tap Monday after the water was turned back on. This jug of brown black water was given to me by the McCracken family who's lived in Meadow Lark for 30 years. This out of a tap in their house. But they've gotten used to the sight of dark water. Nothing. Ron and Carla McCracken have lived in this mobile home park for 30 years, but Monday was a first for them. So we've been out of water since 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon on a Sunday. A park-wide water outage they say came without much notice. 1 o'clock they turned the water off and a friend of ours came down and he said he got a text, said it'd only be a couple hours. Um, midnight last night, still no water. Four o'clock this morning, still no water. Haven Park, the Utah-based company that owns the Meadowlark Mobile Home Park, says a water main break forced a 24-hour shutdown for repairs, and the company would provide bottled water for residents in the meantime. Why'd you get that? Because there's no water. It's shut off. The temporary water outage brought tensions in the park between residents and management to a boiling point. I want water and I want it today. It's my right as a human being, not as a renter, but as a human being. As residents were picking up packs of bottled water from the office, things got heated and law enforcement was called. Are you able to wash your toilet? Are you able to take a shower? Residents like Christine Blaylock says it's a buildup of frustration over months of bad water. We've had off and on black to brown to yellow water for about the last 18 months. Meadowlark is on a well system, not city water, and pumps all its water through four big tanks. But an issue in the filtration system allows sediments like iron and manganese to pass through discoloring water. Where's that water from? Tap. The Montana Department of Environmental Quality says despite its appearance, the water is safe to drink. But even before Sunday's water main break, many residents were already on bottled water. The water came back on around noon on Monday. And while Haven Park pledges continued action on trying to fix the water system, residents said they're tired of waiting. They need to be held accountable. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. All right, looking ahead to the weather today yep. with our Miller Robinson. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing, Andrew? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm uh, doing good. good. I bring uh, good news. Good. Getting a little warmer, maybe. Good. Yeah, a lot of sunshine. Yeah, it was nice yesterday. Yeah, unfortunately, we're just going to deal with some winds, though, especially mm -hmm. around the foothills. we got the gap low winds that we're dealing with. Uh, we're here in uh, Billings uh, and areas around the, uh, the, the Magic City. Probably going to be a little breezy as we go along today as you take a live look. Uh, actually, that is a time lapse of the stars passing overhead. Ooh. Beautiful shot there from the... Uh, Stockman Bank weather cam 29 right now here in Billings feels like 16 winds out of the southwest at about 18 miles an hour. Take a look at temperatures across the board. Uh, some uh, warmer spots this morning. We've got some 30s 31 right now in Roundup 34 in Harlington 32 right at the freezing mark in Livingston down in Cody. We're at 31. So uh, basically we're looking at anywhere from the uh, teens 20s and 30s as we get up at Adam highs today in the 30s and 40s trying to get back to seasonal. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely see those stronger winds. Uh, gap flow winds along the uh, foothills still breezy here in Billings. We're going to have another dry day and then we may see some changes tomorrow. We do have a very weak front that's going to come through. Could kick up a wintry mix, but it doesn't affect uh, Thanksgiving Thursday. Thursday looks pretty good, but maybe a big change in the weather trend coming next week. So okay. a lot of stuff to break down. We'll do that with the main forecast coming up. Okay, some changes maybe. Yeah, We're going to so. stay tuned. Mm -hmm. All right, Miller, thanks so much. You got it. All right, new this morning, we are meeting the heroes who took down the Colorado nightclub shooter, potentially saving dozens of lives. CBS's Danya Bacchus catches up with a military veteran who tackled the armed shooter. 
I'm not a hero, I'm just some dude. Richard Fierro didn't think twice about stopping the gunman who opened fire in the middle of a Colorado Springs nightclub Saturday night. I hit him with the, the gun, his gun, not mine. I grabbed it and I hit him with it. I kept hitting with it. The U.S. Army veteran who was at the club with his wife, daughter, and her boyfriend, Raymond Green Vance, says he wanted to save his family. That family was, at that time, everybody in that room. Vance, along with Ashley Paw, Kelly Loving, and bartenders Derek Rump and Daniel Aston were killed. My daughter got to spend her last day with him happy. Five crosses have been placed here at the growing memorial outside of Club Q. The city's mayor says he wants his community to not be defined by the tragedy, but by the response. Too often, uh, society loses track of the victims of these sad and tragic events. We strive to give the victims the dignity and respect that they deserve. Tributes continued Monday in Colorado Springs and other cities. The Denver City and County Building was lit up in pride colors overnight, while vigils were held in North Carolina and Washington, D.C. Love one another. Be your true, authentic self. Police are still determining the motive of the suspect, 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich, who remains hospitalized. He faces five counts of first-degree murder and five counts of committing a bias-motivated crime. Donya Backus, CBS News, Colorado Springs. And Colorado Springs officials say Aldrich is expected to make his first court appearance remotely in the coming days. All the victims of the attack are being remembered locally. A vigil at MSU Billings was already in the works, scheduled to mark Transgender Day of Remembrance. Then the violence carried out over the weekend shifted that focus to honoring the victims, which include a trans man. We all like feel a communal grief when we lose somebody that's of the community in such a horrific fashion. Um, and so a lot of times we need, you know, leadership within a community to step up and be the guidance in terms of um, grief processing and assisting with, you know, just trying to understand the incident. Both kind of the sense of, of loss and grief that is involved in a vigil, but I'm hoping People are able to walk away knowing it's within our power to do something. Organizers believe charging the shooter with hate crimes is the right choice. We're learning this morning the U.S. is inching closer to a railroad strike. Union members voted down another tentative labor contract. If a deal can't be reached by next month, a strike could follow, costing the economy $2 billion a day. The World Health Organization says the winter will be life-threatening for the people of Ukraine. Authorities are evacuating residents in some of the newly liberated areas because they're without heat, power, or clean water. They do recommend those with the means to leave the country do so in order to free up resources. Questions continue to swirl over the stabbings of four University of Idaho students. Now residents are concerned another crime may be linked to their murders. An Australian shepherd was found brutally killed and skinned just three miles from the attack. Authorities have not linked the quadruple homicide to the pet's death. They have not identified any suspects or persons of interest in the crime either. Today, the case against members of the Oath Keepers goes to a jury. The group's founder and four members are accused of seditious conspiracy. Prosecutors say they plotted to stop Congress from certifying the results of the 2020 election on January 6th. Four cases involving former President Donald Trump are in different courtrooms today. The cases include the Justice Department's investigation into Trump's handling of classified documents and two cases against the Trump Organization. The final case involves a woman who accused Trump of rape, a charge which he denies. Frantic searches are underway this morning to find any survivors of this devastating 5.6 magnitude earthquake. This is in Indonesia. It toppled homes and schools in a highly populated area. And overnight, the death toll jumped to 252 it is, of course, expected to rise. This morning, we're meeting a Columbus mother using a personal tragedy to raise awareness for a deadly disease. Here's Q2's Haley Monaco. November is Epilepsy Awareness Month, and one mother who lost her son when he had a seizure at work hopes that sharing his story will help bring more awareness to the disorder. He lived life to the fullest. You know, people can with epilepsy. For Robin Smith, November 21st is an emotional day. Smith lost her son, Justin, on this day five years ago. Justin Cruy was just 28 years old. But for Cruy, the seizure started when he was just 12. He's getting ready for a soccer game, and I heard a noise in the bathroom, and the next thing I knew, he was having a seizure. Cruy was diagnosed with epilepsy, but he never let it, nor the grand mal seizures, define him. 
He played sports, loved reading, and eventually got married and started a family. The little boy that they adopted was the apple of Justin's eye. But the journey through his disorder was not always easy. Smith says her son found medication to control his seizures the first several years. But when he turned 17, it stopped working. Through that process, found out that he wasn't able to take generics. While dealing with insurance and struggling to find medicine that worked, the family was paying $900 a month for medication. If you get a generic, it could have 15% less active ingredient and you're not going to feel the same on that medication or respond the same. Kyle Austin is the owner at Farm 406 and says it isn't unusual for someone to not respond to a generic medication the same as a name brand. He also says battling with insurance companies is common. They're playing this game so they can profiteer on their end and not do what's right at the end of the day. After 28 full years of life, Krui's mom received the phone call that her son had passed away while at work following a seizure. Didn't want to believe it. In fact, I think all the way there I kept saying, they're mistaken, they're mistaken, but they weren't. Today, Smith remembers her son by looking at old photos, listening to his voice. Did you get that, mom? <laughs> and through action by encouraging people with epilepsy to talk about it. It's good to talk about it so people know to be aware. Awareness about a disorder that far too often gets little attention. In Columbus, Haley Monaco, MTN News. All right, thanks Haley for that story. All right, happening today, folks are hitting the road or heading to the airport traveling for Thanksgiving. That's right, our Augusta McDonald, she is here to break down how busy this travel week is gonna be. Good morning to you, Augusta. Good morning, Andrea. AAA projects more than 54 million Americans will go 50 miles or more this Thanksgiving. That's pretty busy, making it the third busiest period since the agency started tracking data 22 years ago. It means millions are ignoring higher prices right now. Let's take a look. Domestic flights this holiday season are 15% more expensive than last year. International airfare are 20% pricier. New York and Atlanta are topping the list of hot holiday destinations in the U.S. And internationally, folks are looking at warm spots like Dubai and the Caribbean. You want to take a trip to the Caribbean? <laughs> I think, I think we need a trip. I didn't. I <laughs> never thought about that for Thanksgiving. Maybe I should. Yeah, why not? All right, Augusta, <laughs> thanks so much for that. Interesting stuff. Okay, so two turkeys are off the hook this morning, getting the annual presidential pardon from President Biden. CBS's Natalie Brand introduces us to the lucky birds. In a decades-old tradition, President Biden kicked off the holiday week. <laughs> by pardoning two turkeys named Chocolate and Chip. Based on their temperament and commitment to being productive members of society, I hereby pardon. I hereby pardon, yes. I hereby pardon Chocolate and Chip. The pair from North Carolina got the full red carpet treatment in the nation's capital, even ruffling a few feathers during their hotel stay. Two years ago, we couldn't even safely have Thanksgiving with large family gatherings. Now we can. The president also used the occasion to remind people to get their booster and flu shots before gathering with loved ones this holiday season. We have new COVID vaccine updates to deal with new variants to protect you and your loved ones. So get it today. First Lady Jill Biden and a fellow Army National Guard mom welcome the official White House Christmas tree Monday in 18 and a half foot fur from a Pennsylvania farm. Tonight, the president and first lady will head to North Carolina to serve meals at a dinner for military service members stationed at Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. OK, those pardon turkeys, chocolate and chip. What fabulous names are those? They will not spend their retirement, or they will now spend their retirement, I should say, on the campus of Carolina State University. Okay, still ahead on this Tuesday morning, a field trip to the future. We're tagging along with the next generation of medical professionals as they learn about this life-saving technology. That's a cool video to watch. All right, 26 degrees out there as we start this Tuesday. It's 514. You're watching Billings' only local morning newscast. And welcome back on this Tuesday morning. The time is 516. You know, high school students eyeing a career in the medical field are getting a once in a lifetime opportunity working with some brand new technology at one of our hospitals. And believe it or not, doctors even let 
our Casey Conlon try it out too. Take a look. Monday was a fun day here at St. Vincent Healthcare dealing with very serious issues. These robots can help possibly save cancer patients' lives. Now I got to try them out, but more importantly, so did potentially Billings' future healthcare workers. I think surgery uh, is really interesting to me. If Aspen Bowman was just leaning towards becoming a surgeon before Monday, it may be squarely in the career lead now. I just always thought of it as like the open procedures, but like seeing all the new possibilities that are coming out, it's very exciting. Bowman and a group from the Med Careers class at the Billings Career Center got hands-on experience with two different surgical robots. It looks really good. You're doing a really good job. Ooh. The Da Vinci here, where the operator virtually controls tiny instruments just feet away, St. V's surgeons have been using it for a number of different procedures. And what we have found repeatedly with robotic surgery is less pain, earlier return to function and activity. But Monday's real star was the ION, a camera-based robotic that is helping diagnose lung cancer earlier than ever. This robot lets us get to spots of the lung that we've never seen before. Kristen Ronquillo has a passion for the lung program, advocating heavily for this new tech, the first of its kind in Montana. You're almost a kid in a candy store. You're, I am. You're very excited. I like robots. <laughs> when you hear the numbers, you'll be just as excited. Recently, up to 80% of people with lung cancer were already incurable at the time of diagnosis. But with early detection through CT scans, some places have been able to lower that to 50% of people. After the scan, the ion can then confirm if a lesion is cancerous, and in the same procedure, the da Vinci can remove it. This is the best we have in 2022 to bend the curve on lung cancer mortality. And I think we're going to see it continue to grow beyond the lungs. But this is a wonderful step forward. A great marriage of the future in tech and those who will use it. In Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News. I feel like I could watch that all day. So interesting. All right, stay with us. We have weather coming up after the break. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Miller Robson. And we're looking at 521 on Tuesday morning. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Let's take a step back in time, shall we? And take a look at the almanac or high yesterday. Just a little bit below seasonal or overnight low pretty much on target. And we're just going to see those temperatures get a little warmer. By the time we get to Friday, it looks like it's going to be our warmest day. Some of us getting into the 50s before we see another cool down coming in. Wind still kind of being the issue the next couple of days. We did have a top gust yesterday of 26 at the airport. Still could see that here in Billings. Gap flow along the foothills could definitely push those winds above 40 miles an hour. In fact, in those areas, probably all the way through Thanksgiving Day before they start to taper off as we get into the weekend. Of course, we didn't see any precipitation yesterday. How are we doing in terms of the moisture for the month? We're still on the plus side for the month in the year, but it's still very dry out there. Could use some moisture. May see some moisture tomorrow, maybe as early as tonight in some spots, but that may be about it for this week. Better chance maybe as we get into next week as we start to see these outlooks showing a shift in the moisture out there. The moisture content may be a better chance leaning a more uh, wetter than average as we get into the latter part of the month and the first part of December. Snow totals were still pacing ahead for the month and for the year. Pretty quiet out there right now. It's a chilly start. 29 right now at the airport. Feels like 16. Winds out of the southwest at about 18 miles an hour. Across the area, just pick out a few spots here. Mile City sitting at 20. By the way, Mile City in areas tonight, there is, and this is late tonight, very slight chance you could see some freezing rain in your area, so something you want to keep an eye on. 27 uh, right now in Forsyth. We've got right at the freezing mark in Roundup. Uh, 31 in Livingston down in Red Lodge. We're at 28. 19 right now in Sheridan. Across the state, basically the same thing, mainly in the 20s and some 30s, even some teens uh, to start. What's it feel like out there right now? It feels like 10 in Mile City. B Big old goose egg in Bozeman sitting at zero. Feels like five in Dillon. Six right now in Butte. Just had a gust clocked of 32 uh, there in Livingston. A chance still to get up to about 40 so we get into the afternoon through this evening. In fact, we're going to hold on to that chance the next couple of days. Still breezy here in Billings. Now as we get into tomorrow, maybe those winds will see a bit of an uptick because we're going to have a cold front or a trough, a Pacific trough moving through the area so we may see those winds really pick up a little bit as we get into Wednesday afternoon into the evening and then try to taper off a little bit as we get into Thanksgiving and then definitely kind of 
easing up as we head into the weekend. So dry today, high pressure still dominant, but here comes that Pacific trough. So we get into later this evening, we're going to start to see some snow up there in the northwest spreading to the western side of the state by late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Uh, we could see uh, uh, some rain, some snow or a wintry mix tomorrow here in Billings and then high pressure takes over again and that should be it for the rest of the week. So there's high pressure. There you go. Pressure gradient gap flow making it windy along the foothills. Here comes that Pacific trough that's going to come through really build up those winds. So we get into Wednesday high pressure takes over and then we've got some really wonderful weather as we get into Thursday Thanksgiving Thursday still could be somewhat windy out there. Highs today in the 30s and 40s, so we are starting to get a little warmer. You can see that across the state and down in northern parts of Wyoming as well. We'll go with a high today of 45 in Billings, so we're trying to get above average. Maybe a bit of a cool down tomorrow back to around seasonal with that front coming through. Thanksgiving Thursday looks absolutely fantastic. Warmest day on Friday, and then we start to see that cool down across the weekend, and those outlooks are showing next week into the first part of December. Cooler and wetter than average on Monday, a chance we could see some snow showers come into the forecast. Time now is 525. Here's Jack Report. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. And good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Tuesday. Thanks for uh, waking up with us. Absolutely, we do appreciate that. And uh, they're feeling pretty good right now in Denver. I think they they're in the, sure are. Look the at that. festive season is underway. Ooh. Downtown Denver, they're right now about 32 degrees at the freezing mark with some clouds kind of feeling like Christmas, looking like Christmas down there. It really is. Look at all those yeah. lights. They're yeah, gorgeous. Absolutely. I love yeah. the lights of Christmas. I love this time of the oh. year. Yeah, All right, I before you know it, we'll have Christmas music on the radio. I think. Well, who uh, says we don't already, Meller? Is there some on there I haven't even paid attention? Man, who I'm says that some of us standing <laughs> here right now are not listening to Christmas music already? I uh, <laughs> you know, resemble that he's, remark. He's All right, giving cool. me like that. All right, as you take a live look, you can see the Sugar Bees factory there cranking away this morning. 29 right now at the airport. Feels like 16. Winds out of the southwest at about 18 miles an hour. A bit breezy as we get up and at them. Take a look at some temperatures up uh, around the area. Cold Strip sitting at about 30, 27 in Forsyth. We've got 14 in Hardin. Belfry sitting at 26. Big Timber at 35. Gardner 13 up in White Sulphur Springs at 29. Down in Powell, we're at 23. Highs today in the 30s and 40s. Back to seasonal. Going to be uh, windy, breezy for most, but windy along the foothills. We'll have a complete look at your forecast coming up here in just a bit. Andrea. All right, Miller, thanks so much. This morning we continue our coverage of that water quality issue at a Billings Mobile Home Park. Now the fight over clean water has reached a boiling point. We're bringing in our Augusta McDonald this morning and uh, Augusta drinking water uh, problems there have persisted. We, we were going back all the way to January thinking about our coverage, but now something new is happening. What's going on? Yes, we had reporters back at the location yesterday, and this time it's maintenance issues, Andrea, leaving residents without water for 24 hours. As you know, Meadowlark is the same Billings community where murky brown water continues pouring from faucets. However, Sunday into Monday, residents had no water at all. They say they were given little notice that property management company Haven Park would be turning it off. Haven Park says a water main break is to blame, but for the people living there, this was the final straw. I want water and I want it today. It's my right as a human being, not as a renter, but as a human being. We've had off and on black to brown to yellow water for about the last 18 months. Water is running again today. Law enforcement was actually called yesterday when arguing got heated as residents were picking up bottled water from the main office. Yeah, man, uh, some yelling actually happening in the parking lot there. We continue to follow yes. this, man. Yes. All right, Augusta, thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, new this morning, we're meeting the heroes who took down the Colorado nightclub shooter, potentially saving dozens of lives. CBS's Danya Bacchus catches up with a military veteran who tackled that armed shooter. I'm not a hero, I'm just some dude. Richard Fierro didn't think twice about stopping the gunman who opened fire in the middle of a Colorado Springs nightclub Saturday night. I hit him with the, the gun, his gun, not mine. I grabbed it and I hit him with it. I kept hitting him with it. The U.S. Army veteran who was at the club with his wife, daughter, and her boyfriend, Raymond Green Vance, says he wanted to save his family. That family was, at that time, everybody in that room. Vance, along with Ashley Paw, Kelly Loving, and bartenders Derek Rump and Daniel Aston were killed. My daughter got to spend her last day with him. Happy. 
Five crosses have been placed here at the growing memorial outside of Club Q. The city's mayor says he wants his community to not be defined by the tragedy, but by the response. Too often, uh, society loses track of the victims of these sad and tragic events. We strive to give the victims the dignity and respect that they deserve. Tributes continued Monday in Colorado Springs and other cities. The Denver City and County Building was lit up in pride colors overnight, while vigils were held in North Carolina and Washington, D.C. Love one another. Be your true, authentic self. Police are still determining the motive of the suspect, 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich, who remains hospitalized. He faces five counts of first-degree murder and five counts of committing a bias-motivated crime. Don Ubacus, CBS News, Colorado Springs. A Colorado Springs officials say Aldrich is expected to make his first court appearance remotely in the coming days. When the victims of the attack are being remembered locally, this vigil at MSUB was already in the works, scheduled to mark Transgender Day of Remembrance. Then the violence carried out over the weekend, shifting the focus to honoring the victims. We all like feel a communal grief when we lose somebody that's of the community in such a horrific fashion. Um, and so a lot of times we need, you know, leadership within a community to step up and be the guidance in terms of um, grief processing and assisting with, you know, just trying to understand the incident. Both kind of the sense of, of loss and grief that is involved in a vigil, but I'm hoping People are able to walk away knowing it's within our power to do something. Organizers believe charging the shooter with hate crimes is the right choice. This morning, we're meeting a Columbus mother using a personal tragedy to raise awareness for a deadly disease. Here's Q2's Haley Monaco. November is Epilepsy Awareness Month, and one mother who lost her son when he had a seizure at work hopes that sharing his story will help bring more awareness to the disorder. He lived life to the fullest. You know, people can with epilepsy. For Robin Smith, November 21st is an emotional day. Smith lost her son, Justin, on this day five years ago. Justin Cruy was just 28 years old. But for Cruy, the seizures started when he was just 12. He was getting ready for a soccer game, and I heard a noise in the bathroom, and the next thing I knew, he was having a seizure. Cruy was diagnosed with epilepsy, but he never let it, nor the grand mal seizures, define him. He played sports, loved reading, and eventually got married and started a family. The little boy that they adopted was the apple of Justin's eye. But the journey through his disorder was not always easy. Smith says her son found medication to control his seizures the first several years. But when he turned 17, it stopped working. Through that process, found out that he wasn't able to take generics. While dealing with insurance and struggling to find medicine that worked, the family was paying $900 a month for medication. If you get a generic, it could have 15% less active ingredient and you're not going to feel the same on that medication or respond the same. Kyle Austin is the owner at Farm 406 and says it isn't unusual for someone to not respond to a generic medication the same as a name brand. He also says, Battling with insurance companies is common. They're playing this game so they can profiteer on their end and not do what's right at the end of the day. After 28 full years of life, Cruy's mom received the phone call that her son had passed away while at work following a seizure. Didn't want to believe it. In fact, I think all the way there I kept saying, they're mistaken, they're mistaken, but they weren't. Today, Smith remembers her son by looking at old photos, listening to his voice, Did you get that, Mom? <laughs> and through action, by encouraging people with epilepsy to talk about it. It's good to talk about it, so people know to be aware. Awareness about a disorder that far too often gets little attention. In Columbus, Haley Monaco, MTN News. We are learning this morning the U.S. is inching closer to a railroad strike. Union members voted down another tentative labor contract. If a deal can't be reached now by next month, a strike could follow, costing the economy $2 billion a day. Questions continue to swirl over the stabbings of four University of Idaho students. Now residents are concerned another crime may be linked to their murders. An Australian shepherd was found brutally killed and skinned just three miles from the attack. Authorities have linked the homicide. They have not linked it to that pet death. 
but they have also not identified a suspect or persons of interest in the crime. Happening today, folks are hitting the road. They're heading to the airport, traveling for the Thanksgiving holiday. 54 million people will travel as much as 50 miles from home. A lot of traveling is going to be happening. As CBS's Wendy Gillette learns, it means ignoring higher prices to get to their destination. Husband and wife Kevin Telly and Becky Kiley are joining the estimated 49 million Americans hitting the road this week. Thanksgiving, we're driving up to Minneapolis uh, from Chicago. AAA says four and a half million people will fly to their Thanksgiving destination despite higher ticket prices. Priceline estimates domestic flights this holiday season are 15% more expensive than last year. International airfares are 20% pricier. Clearly, fuel prices are up over 50% versus uh, even a year ago. And of course, just inflation in general, the cost uh, to staff the airlines, the cost to uh, service the planes, etc., all lead to higher airline prices. But that's not keeping travelers from taking the vacations they desire. Hot holiday destinations include New York, Atlanta, Las Vegas, Orlando, and internationally, Europe, Tokyo, Dubai, and the Caribbean. In Aruba, arrival numbers are setting records above pre-pandemic levels, according to the Tourism Authority. Here at the Renaissance Wind Creek, which has a private island where flamingos roam free, more than 80% of rooms are already booked for the holidays, with most ocean suites sold out. It's a similar situation at the Marriott Resort and Stellaris Casino, where we stayed for a special rate. It's almost 95% sold out for the holidays. There was a lot of panned up demand. Uh, people have waited to travel for about two years. We have a lot of regular guests who've been coming to Aruba for many years. Hotel rates for international destinations are a better bet than those closer to home. According to Priceline, holiday prices are up 7% in the U.S. from last year, but have stayed flat overseas. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, Renaissance Island. Okay, take a look at these plump birds right here. They are no longer on the menu this Thanksgiving. That's chocolate and chip. Yep, I love those names. They were given the official White House pardon by President Biden. The president even joking, the votes, <laughs> the votes were in and there was no foul play. Okay, that's pretty funny. All right, we've got much more coming up this morning on Montana This Morning. Stores like Goodwill and Salvation Army are becoming go-tos for holiday shopping. We're gonna take a look at why I think you might know why but 28 degrees out there right now as we take a look over Billings you know Miller has another look at that forecast coming up you are watching Billings only local morning newscast good Tuesday morning everyone time now 544 16 minutes away from uh, six o'clock a bit chilly out there this morning but trying to get back above seasonal this afternoon if we hit 45 that's just a few degrees above the norm We'll have our fair share of sunshine today. Uh, windy along the foothills, breezy in our area. We may see some snow tomorrow, at least a wintry mix and maybe even some freezing rain. We'll break it all down here in just a second on this go for a ride day. Oh man, I love to take a ride. Yeah. That's so much fun. You know, yep. Montana has the best roads for it too. Sure enough, man, some beautiful views out there. Uh, a good day to go for a ride if, you, if you're if you okay with fighting the wind a little bit, especially those gap low winds, or, you know, Livingston, Nye, Big Timber area, usual suspects, pretty windy out there Just today. Just go for a ride and really hold on to the <laughs> steering wheel. Hold on tight, there, there you, you go. go. All right, so cool. Well, enjoy your ride if you do go out. <laughs> uh, your morning commute this morning, it's gonna be a chilly one as we take a look at the temperatures around the 48s. Uh, we saw a live shot of uh, Denver earlier. Got the big tree there, very festive, sitting at 32 right now. 25 in Salt Lake City, 21 in Omaha, up in uh, Minneapolis, we're at 22. Down in Atlanta, it's chilly, sitting at 39. Miami at about 72 right now. 59 today in the heartland of Kansas City in uh, New York and Boston, getting into the upper 40s. We'll go 50 in Seattle, Los Angeles, into the low 70s. Weather headlines for the 48 Pacific Northwest to uh, northern central plains. Rain, snow spreading across the area. The southern plains temperatures remaining below average again today. Northern and central plains, Midwest, West Coast. Uh, those temperatures are warming up in the southern plains, lower Mississippi Valley. Heavy rain potential on Thanksgiving. For us, though, Thanksgiving is shaping up to be a really nice one this year. As the city slowly comes to life, a great shot downtown there, courtesy of the Stockman Bank. Weather cam sitting at 29 at the airport. Feels like 16. Winds out the southwest at about 18 
miles an hour. Wind chills out there. What does it feel like? Yeah, it feels like 10 right now in Miles City. Feels like 5 in Dillon, 6 in Butte. Down in Warland, a uh, roasty toasty 11 degrees is what it feels like. Yeah, the wind's not helping out along the uh, Rocky Mountain front. That's where we're seeing some of those stronger gusts. The Foothills just had one of uh, 32 at Livingston. Still going to see those gap flow winds as we go along today. Over the next couple of days, especially tomorrow, we're going to be chasing behind a cold front uh, or at least a trough. Uh, so those winds will start to chase behind that. So we actually may see some stronger winds here in Billings as well, where we could see gusts in excess of 30 miles an hour tomorrow. Then as we head toward the weekend, starting to ease up so it won't be as windy. Dry to start, but you'll notice up in the northwest corner of the state, here we go, starting to see some of that wintry mix come in. Maybe some full on snow showers off to our west. For us in our area late tonight, we could actually see maybe some freezing rain in areas around Mile City. Then tomorrow as we get into the afternoon, maybe some rain, snow, wintry mix, depending on the timing of when that front comes through and if there's available moisture and if it's going to be cold enough. And then high pressure takes over beyond that. And we're looking pretty darn good. So there's your high pressure to start to keep us dry today. Uh, breaks down just a little bit as that front comes through. Gives us a chance of uh, some type of precipitation, depending on where you may be. And then high pressure builds in behind that as we move forward, making for a very sunny Thanksgiving Thursday, not that bad. Highs today across the state and locally, we're mainly in the 30s and 40s. We'll go 45 today in Billings, uh, a little cooler tomorrow behind that front with a chance of maybe a wintry mix. And then Thursday, the payoff Thanksgiving day looks great, maybe a bit breezy. And then Friday, our warmest day of the week before we cool down heading into the weekend. Time now is 548. You're watching Billings only local morning newscast and we'll be right back. Hey, welcome back on this Tuesday morning. It's 551. Let's get to some more headlines. The government says major health insurance companies are overbilling by millions for Medicare impacting taxpayers. Newly released audits show pavement errors uncovered 12 million in overpayments for 18,000 patients. The actual losses to taxpayers is expected to be much higher. You don't have to worry about your packages not making it in time for the holidays. That's because the country's major shipping companies feel pretty confident about on-time deliveries this year. FedEx, UPS, and the Postal Service say they have enough capacity to handle the holiday rush. After struggling for the past two years, consumer shopping done early, uh, shopping in stores, and cutting back on spending because of inflation, they say all helped. We're also learning that more people are choosing to shop secondhand. The resale business is booming, in fact, growing 15% in 2021. It's twice as fast as a broader retail market. Industry experts say more consumers are turning to secondhand for one-of-a-kind finds like art, vintage handbags, and sneakers. All right, stay with us. We have more weather right after the break. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Miller Robson. And we're about six minutes away from six o'clock on a Tuesday morning. Before we get into that forecast, got some really cool photos I want to show off. First off, this is from Greg Wise, where those big sheep, bighorn sheep getting ready to knock heads. Also, this is a great shot. Oh, I was looking forward to showing this one to you. This is from Annette. Beautiful sky in Clark, Wyoming. Absolutely stunning. Great photos there. Hey, remember, if you've got a photo or a video, uh, could be weather, could be animals, could be something fun to put a smile on folks' faces, send it to us. Let's see if we can show it off for you. Uh, you can do it, uh, send it via the Q2 mobile storm tracker weather app. You can download that on Google Play or your app store. Send it via Facebook or shoot us an email, weather at KTVQ.com. As we get up and at them, it is 29 right now at the airport here in Billings, 32 at the freezing mark and roundup, 36 in Harlington, up in Jordan, we're at 24, Mile City sitting at 20, 26 in Broadus, down in Red Lodge, we're clocking in at 28, 19 right now for my friends in Sheridan. Winds, gap low winds still going to be very strong, usual suspects, Livingston, Nye, Big Timber, those areas, Harlington as well, definitely going to see those stronger winds, maybe in excess of 40 miles an hour. Breezy across the rest of the Q2 viewing area, including Billings, where we could still see gusts up to 25 today, but tomorrow may be a little windier because we do have a uh, front that's going to be coming through and those winds will be chasing in behind that so they could pick up again. Let's just go ahead and show you that front we're talking about. So high pressures continuing to keep us dry today. We'll start to weaken its grip a little bit as that front comes through tomorrow and you can see we'll see the winds whipping behind that and we're going to have a chance to see maybe a wintry mix here in the area. Now tonight, late tonight, areas around Mile City could actually get a little bit of freezing rain out ahead of the system and then boom, high pressure takes over looking really good moving moving forward uh, for the rest of the work week. Thanksgiving Day, although it's going to be windy to breezy in spots, definitely windy along the uh, foothills possible. Uh, it's going to be a lot of sunshine on Thursday, so a really nice day to enjoy time with family. So today we'll go mostly sunny, 
Breezy to windy, those highs mainly in the 30s and 40s. 45 for my friends in Livingston, getting up to about 44 in Cody this afternoon with lots of sunshine. 39 in Mile City, we'll go 44 in Sheridan. Uh, here in Billings, up to about 45 today. Thanksgiving looks fantastic. Uh, Friday is going to be our warmest day, getting into the low 50s. But as we get into the weekend, starting to see a change. We're looking at the different outlooks. It is leaning wetter and colder than average as we get into the latter part of uh, November into the early part of December. And on Monday, maybe a decent chance of seeing some snow showers coming into the area, something we'll definitely keep an eye on. Time now is 5.57. We're three away from 6 o'clock and another hour of news and weather coming at you. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. MSUB students are remembering the victims of the Colorado shooting. We all like feel a communal grief when we lose somebody that's of the community in such a horrific fashion. Plus it's Epilepsy Awareness Month, how a local woman is using her pain to educate others about this deadly disease. It's good to talk about it so people know to be aware. And Thanksgiving travel is getting underway. We'll tell you what you can expect at the airport and on the roadways before you head off. All right, good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Tuesday, November 22nd. New this morning, a fight over clean water is reaching a boiling point. At a Billings Mobile Home Park, residents confronting management and law enforcement trying to keep the peace. SQ2's Jackie Coffin learns the company shut off tenants water for 24 hours, throwing gasoline on an already combustible dispute. Water did come back on for Meadow Lark residents Monday afternoon, but I want to show you what that water looks like for some residents coming out of their tap Monday after the water was turned back on. This jug of brown black water was given to me by the McCracken family who's lived in Meadow Lark for 30 years. This out of a tap in their house. They've gotten used to the sight of dark water. Nothing. Ron and Carla McCracken have lived in this mobile home park for 30 years, but Monday was a first for them. So we've been out of water since 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon on a Sunday. A park-wide water outage, they say, came without much notice. 1 o'clock they turned the water off, and a friend of ours came down and he said he got a text said it'd only be a couple hours. Um, midnight last night, still no water. Four o'clock this morning, still no water. Haven Park, the Utah-based company that owns the Meadowlark Mobile Home Park, says a water main break forced a 24-hour shutdown for repairs, and the company would provide bottled water for residents in the meantime. Why'd you get that? Because there's no water, it's shut off. The temporary water outage brought tensions in the park between residents and management to a boiling point. I want water and I want it today. It's my right as a human being, not as a renter, but as a human being. As residents were picking up packs of bottled water from the office, things got heated and law enforcement was called. Are you able to wash your toilet? Are you able to take a shower? Residents like Christine Blaylock says it's a buildup of frustration over months of bad water. We've had off and on black to brown to yellow water for about the last 18 months. Meadowlark is on a well system, not city water, and pumps all its water through four big tanks. But an issue in the filtration system allows sediments like iron and manganese to pass through, discoloring water. Where's that water from? Tap. The Montana Department of Environmental Quality says despite its appearance, the water is safe to drink. But even before Sunday's water main break, many residents were already on bottled water. The water came back on around noon on Monday. And while Haven Park pledges continued action on trying to fix the water system, residents said they're tired of waiting. They need to be held accountable. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Let's turn it over to the weather. We've got Miller in with us this morning. Hey, um, yeah. it's going to be not so bad, huh? No, not a bad day at all. Good. A lot of sunshine today. It's going to be windy, though, especially oh, along the foothills. Yeah. Those winds and in, in, in actually anticipated to pick up later tonight, uh, the stronger stuff tonight through tomorrow morning. We do have this front that's going to pass through, so they'll be whipping. Do have a wind advisory in effect for the Beartooth foothills that will kick in later on this evening. Will be breezy across the rest of the area. More on that in just a second. Let's take a step back in time and look at the Almanac. 
Yesterday's highs and lows pretty much on target where we should be for this time of the season. Top gusts yesterday of 26. We could still see that again today, especially tomorrow at the airport as we'll be behind that front. Dry day yesterday. How are we doing in terms of the moisture total still ahead for the month and for the year, but it's still dry out there. Very dry in some spots around the Q2 viewing area, so we could use some more moisture. We may see some of that late tonight through tomorrow. Snow totals for the month and for the year. We're doing okay. Let's take a look at those temperatures out there right now. We're sitting at 30 here in Billings uh, at the airport. Uh, feels like 18. Winds out of the southwest at about 20 miles an hour. You see 20s and 30s for the most part across the board. Do have some teens out there like Harden's down at 14 right now. 30s and 40s today. So trying to get back on track to seasonal temperatures. Uh, Friday looks like it's going to be our warmest day mm. into the 50s. And then we see more changes in the forecast moving forward. So we'll break it all down coming up here in just a bit. Okay, sounds good. Miller, thanks so much. You got it. All right, new this morning, we are meeting the heroes who took down the Colorado nightclub shooter, potentially saving dozens of lives. CBS's Donya Bacchus catches up with a military vet who tackled the armed shooter. I'm not a hero, I'm just some dude. Richard Fierro didn't think twice about stopping the gunman who opened fire in the middle of a Colorado Springs nightclub Saturday night. I hit him with the, the gun, his gun, not mine. I grabbed it. And I hit him with it. I kept hitting him with it. The U.S. Army veteran who was at the club with his wife, daughter, and her boyfriend, Raymond Green Vance, says he wanted to save his family. That family was, at that time, everybody in that room. Vance, along with Ashley Paw, Kelly Loving, and bartenders Derek Rump and Daniel Aston were killed. My daughter got to spend her last day with him happy. Five crosses have been placed here at the growing memorial outside of Club Q. The city's mayor says he wants his community to not be defined by the tragedy, but by the response. Too often, uh, society loses track of the victims of these sad and tragic events. We strive to give the victims the dignity and respect that they deserve. Tributes continued Monday in Colorado Springs and other cities. The Denver City and County Building was lit up in pride colors overnight, while vigils were held in North Carolina and Washington, D.C. Love one another. Be your true, authentic self. Police are still determining the motive of the suspect, 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich, who remains hospitalized. He faces five counts of first-degree murder and five counts of committing a bias-motivated crime. Don Ubacus, CBS News, Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs officials say Aldrich is expected to make his first court appearance remotely in the coming days. While the victims of the attack are being remembered locally, this vigil at MSUB was already in the works, scheduled to mark Transgender Day of Remembrance. Then the violence carried out over the weekend, it shifted the focus to honoring those victims. We all like feel a communal grief when we lose somebody that's of the community in such a horrific fashion. Um, and so a lot of times we need, you know, leadership within a community to step up and be the guidance in terms of um, grief processing and assisting with, you know, just trying to understand the incident. Both kind of the sense of, of loss and grief that is involved in a vigil, but I'm hoping People are able to walk away knowing it's within our power to do something. Organizers believe charging the shooter with hate crimes is the right choice. The World Health Organization says this winter is going to be life-threatening for the people of Ukraine. Authorities are evacuating residents in some of the newly liberated areas because they're without heat, power, clean water, and they're recommending people who have the means to leave the country do so in order to free up resources. Questions continue to swirl over the stabbings of four University of Idaho students. Now residents are concerned another crime may be linked to their murders. An Australian shepherd was found brutally killed and skinned just three miles from that attack. Authorities have not linked the quadruple homicide to the pet's death. They have not identified any suspects or persons of interest in this crime yet either. This morning, we're meeting a Columbus woman using a personal tragedy to raise awareness for a deadly disease. Here's Q2's Haley Monaco. November is Epilepsy Awareness Month, and one mother who lost her son when he had a seizure at work hopes that sharing his story will help bring more awareness to the disorder. He lived life to the fullest. You know, people can with epilepsy. For Robin Smith, November 21st is an emotional day. Smith lost her son, Justin, on this day five years ago. Justin Cruy was just 28 years old. 
But for Cruy, the seizure started when he was just 12. He was getting ready for a soccer game and I heard a noise in the bathroom and the next thing I knew he was having a seizure. Cruy was diagnosed with epilepsy, but he never let it, nor the grand mal seizures, define him. He played sports, loved reading, and eventually got married and started a family. The little boy that they adopted was the apple of Justin's eye. But the journey through his disorder was not always easy. Smith says her son found medication to control his seizures the first several years. But when he turned 17, it stopped working. Through that process, found out that he wasn't able to take generics. While dealing with insurance and struggling to find medicine that worked, the family was paying $900 a month for medication. If you get a generic, it could have 15% less active ingredient and you're not going to feel the same on that medication or respond the same. Kyle Austin is the owner at Farm 406 and says it isn't unusual for someone to not respond to a generic medication the same as a name brand. He also says, Battling with insurance companies is common. They're playing this game so they can profiteer on their end and not do what's right at the end of the day. After 28 full years of life, Cruy's mom received the phone call that her son had passed away while at work following a seizure. Didn't want to believe it. In fact, I think all the way there I kept saying, they're mistaken, they're mistaken, but they weren't. Today, Smith remembers her son by looking at old photos, listening to his voice, Did you get that, Mom? <laughs> and through action, by encouraging people with epilepsy to talk about it. It's good to talk about it, so people know to be aware. Awareness about a disorder that far too often gets little attention. In Columbus, Haley Monaco, MTN News. An important story. All right, Haley, thanks so much. Okay, happening today, folks are hitting the road. They're heading to the airport too, traveling for Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, our Augusta McDonald, there she is. She's breaking down all the busyness of this travel week. Good morning to you, Augusta. Hey, good morning. Look at this behind me. This is LAX. This is traffic going into the airport in LA. Wow. Very glad that we don't have to deal with that. But as you can see, a lot of people heading into the airport. It's a busy travel weekend. AAA projects more than 54 million Americans will go 50 miles or more this Thanksgiving, which isn't that far in Montana, making it the third busiest period since the agency started tracking data 22 years ago. It means millions are ignoring higher prices. Take a look. Domestic flights this holiday season are 15% more expensive than last year. International airfares are 20% pricier. New York and Atlanta are topping the list of hot holiday destinations in the U.S. and internationally folks are looking at warm spots like Dubai and the Caribbean and we were discussing which we would prefer. I feel like, I don't know, Dubai would be so cool. I know a lot of people go there so now, trendy but of now. course, yeah, yeah, the Caribbean would be amazing. I mean, a beach vacation, can't <laughs> can't beat that. Some turkey on your beach vacation. Yes, right. absolutely. I think you'd have to take it with you though. You probably, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Augusta, thanks so much. Yeah, Thank it's you. gonna be a busy week for Thanksgiving. You know, this is happening too. Tur turkeys are off the hook this morning, yeah. They are not going to be on your dinner table. They're getting the annual presidential pardon from President Biden. CBS's Natalie Brand introduces us to the lucky birds. In a decades old tradition, President Biden kicked off the holiday week <laughs> by pardoning two turkeys named Chocolate and Chip. Based on their temperament and commitment to being productive members of society, I hereby pardon. I hereby pardon. Yes. I hereby pardon chocolate and chip. The pair from North Carolina got the full red carpet treatment in the nation's capital, even ruffling a few feathers during their hotel stay. Two years ago, we couldn't even safely have Thanksgiving with large family gatherings. Now we can. The president also used the occasion to remind people to get their booster and flu shots before gathering with loved ones this holiday season. We have new COVID vaccine updates to deal with new variants to protect you and your loved ones, so get it today. First Lady Jill Biden and a fellow Army National Guard mom welcomed the official White House Christmas tree Monday in 18 and a half foot fur from a Pennsylvania farm. Tonight, the President and First Lady will head to North Carolina to serve meals at a dinner for military service members stationed at Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Washington.
The Pardon Turkey's Chocolate and Chip will now spend their retirement on the campus of North Carolina State University. How lucky are they? All right, still ahead on this Tuesday morning, we are following along with NASA's Artemis Moon Mission. It's incredible video that we're going to show you coming up. And what's next for that unmanned spacecraft? But look at all the lights that are happening over Billings this morning. Just 28 degrees out there. 614 is the time. You're watching Billings only local morning newscast.